Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Atlantic City, the Las Vegas of the East Coast. There's a bar in far Bombay. But gambling habits are not the only well-kept secrets in this town. These are US Federal Air Marshals at a training facility in Atlantic City. Their identities are a closely guarded secret. Their faces and those of instructors who are still serving officers cannot be shown. They're going to have to learn to shoot from a seated position. So the movement is part of their training. One could be sitting next to you on any flight into or out of the US, and they won't all look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. They're members of a revamped air marshal agency, born of the September 11 hijackings of four American commercial airliners. Oh, a major change, a major change. You cannot compare the, the Federal Air Marshal Service now as it was prior to September 11th. It effectively meant rebuilding the agency from the ground up, giving air marshals greatly expanded powers and duties. Standing up a new agency is a monumental task, and uh, this has never been done before in such a, a short period of time. In the history of federal law enforcement, the federal air marshals now are, more, are, are really much more of a law enforcement entity than ever before. They get involved in enforcing not only uh, uh, laws uh, involving terrorist activities, but also various types of violent crimes that are, can occur on an aircraft. Previously, air marshals were attached only to international flights. Now it's domestic flights too. Only the pilot and crew will know they're on board and they'll make split-second decisions on whether to act in a situation that can provide no backup. And police officer, remain calm. Police officer, been a minor incident on the aircraft. Got a little bit of disturbance here. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Prior to September 11, there were just 33 federal air marshals for the entire United States. Now they number in their thousands, fanning out across a flight system that involves some 26,000 flights a day. After 9-11, there were a lot of people that came on board out of patriotism, that came over to, to, to be a part of this, and the, the, the job is very demanding. Any federal law enforcement job is extremely demanding. Federal Air Marshal Service is no different. Some people realize now that the pace is just a little bit too much that they can't handle. Okay, this flight is from uh, Moscow to Denmark. It's a hijack! Can anybody move? 37-year-old Anna, who will only narrow down her country of origin to Scandinavia, applied for the job just weeks before September 11. The urge to join was even greater after. I knew I had to, I had to get that job, that I knew it, I, I knew I could. For me, especially being a female, I guess it, it was a good surprise to be in the aircraft. Most of all, what was appealing to me then was, was um, what I could do for my new country. The American airline industry is struggling to stay in the air. Fear of reprisal attacks saw passenger numbers dramatically trail off in the lead up to the war in Iraq and they've continued to fall. Industry bodies estimate losses during the war could total more than 10 billion US dollars and mean liquidation for major airlines. The only way to keep people flying is to convince them it's safe. I can't help but think that uh, every passenger that gets on an aircraft is hoping that there will be a federal air marshal team on board. There's a great amount of confidence knowing that, God forbid something happens, uh, that there will be someone there to take action. So I, I feel we give a tremendous amount of confidence to the average uh, passenger. It's impossible to put an air marshal on every flight. Each assignment is based on a risk assessment. It will cost billions of dollars, but the agency is convinced the skies are now considerably safer than they were 18 months ago.